If you've ever opened a photo and thought, hang on, why does it say this picture was taken in 1970? Or your beautifully scanned photos all show the wrong date. Then this video is for you. In this video, we're diving into EXIF Pilot, a small but mighty program that lets you read, edit, and even copy metadata between tags without writing a single line of code. And make sure you stay with me until the end, because I'll share a bonus tip that shows how you can copy one date into every field other programs use. It's a lifesaver for old scans or mixed camera imports. Install and setup. Let's start at the beginning, getting Exif Pilot set up. It's a simple install, but there are a couple of things you need to know before you start. So head on over to colorpilot.com and download Exif Pilot. Exif Pilot Basic is free, but if you want to batch edit, there is a paid for plugin that you'll need. Once it's installed, open it up and you'll see a simple, no nonsense interface. On the left, you've got your folders. This is your navigation area. Click through to any folder with images and the files will appear in the middle section. That middle panel is where you'll do most of your browsing. Then over on the right hand side, you'll see two key areas. The top right is a small preview thumbnail so you can confirm which image you are editing. And the bottom right is where all the detailed metadata lives. That's your EXIF, IPTC, all that kind of stuff. If you've ever used something like Windows Explorer, you'll feel right at home. Before we start editing, let's tidy up what we see on the screen so it shows the most useful data. Customizing columns. Exif Pilot's layout is nice and clean, but it's worth customizing so you can see the fields you care about most, especially if you're fixing dates, keywords, or people tags. Go to Tools, Options, and Customize Columns. This lets you decide which columns show up in the center panel. It will take a little bit of time finding everything you want, but I usually go for this setup. From file, forward slash main, I use file name, date creation, date last accessed, and file size. Then from exif forward slash photo, I use date time digitized, and date time original. These are the real taken dates. From IPTC forward slash application, I get caption, category, and keywords. And from the XMP forward slash IPTC4 XMP extension, I use person in image. That is where face tagging info often lives. Once you've done that, you'll be able to glance across your photos and instantly see what's missing, what's wrong, and what's worth fixing. Metadata basics, read, edit, delete. Now let's get into the fun part, editing your metadata. This is what Exif Pilot is all about. Option one, the guided editor. On the left, choose your folder, in the middle, click on a photo. You'll see a preview in the top right and all its metadata fields below. Click on Edit EXIF IPTC XMP. This opens up a full editing window with tabs for each section. Fill in or change the fields you want, maybe a missing date taken, a new caption, or even a GPS location. Click OK to save. Option two, the direct edit. If you know exactly what you want to change, this is faster. In the property list at the bottom right, just double click on the tag that you want to change. Type in your new value and hit OK. That's it. You've edited the metadata directly without having to scroll through every tab. And if you ever need to remove something entirely, say a GPS coordinate or a comment you don't want to share, just double click the tag again. Tick the box that says delete tag and hit OK. That instantly wipes it from the file metadata. Adding keywords. Now let's add something that will make your collection so much easier to search later, keywords. Keywords are like invisible sticky notes that describe what's in your photos. Things like beach, family or birthday. And the best part, 
Once they're in the metadata, every other program that reads IPTC or XMP will see them too. Open the folder and select one photo you want to change. Click Edit, EXIF, IPTC, XMP to open the editor. Go to the Keywords tab. In the panel, you'll see a list of existing keywords. You can add new ones, remove the ones you don't want, or double click to edit existing ones. When you're done, press enter to save the edits. But this is where EXIF Pilot gets clever. It has something called Keyword Bucket. Think of it like a personal list of favorite tags you can reuse over and over. So say you often tag with family and travel or client work, you can save these as quick shortcuts. To do that, type in the keyword in the input field, click add and that stores it in your bucket. Then whenever you want to apply it to a photo, just select the keyword from your bucket and click add. Once you've finished, click OK and your keywords are written straight to the file's IPTC metadata. That means when you open it later in something like Bridge or Lightroom, those same keywords will appear automatically. If you're watching this and thinking, this is great, but my photos are still all over the place, then you might want to check out my Photo Mess Success courses. They are perfect if you are ready to finally get your photos into one system, create a backup plan that works and start enjoying those photos again. You can find out more at photomesssuccess.co.uk and there is a version for both Mac and PC so you'll be covered whatever you use. Copying values between tags. Now, here's one of the cleverest things EXIF Pilot can do, and my personal favorite feature. You can copy a value from one tag to another without retyping anything. This is a game changer when you've got metadata that's inconsistent. For example, maybe your date time original tag is correct, but date created is blank, which means sorting by date in some programs won't work properly. So let's fix that. In the list of properties, double click the destination tag the one you want to fill. In the pop-up, type the extension. So for me, I'm going to use the forward slash exif, forward slash photo, forward slash date time original, because I want to copy that into the creation date or whichever tag path holds your good data. Then click OK. And you will see that the date that you selected has now copied over to where you want it. Batch options, free versus paid. So you might have spotted that EXIF Pilot has a batch option, but here's the deal. In the free version, you can edit individual files, but that's all. It's very manual. If you want to apply the same change to hundreds of photos in one go, say copy the date taken to date created across a whole folder, you'll need the batch plugin, which is a paid for add-on. If you're just starting out, stick with the free version. You can still individually make edits and write keywords or dates manually. Then if you start doing this regularly for clients or large archives, the plugin is worth the upgrade. Bonus tip, the one-click fix for scanned photos. Okay, as promised, here's the bonus tip that makes EXIF Pilot worth its weight in gold. If you digitize old photos or scanned albums, they usually all have the wrong date, often the day you scanned them, not the day they were taken. This is how to fix that properly. Once you've entered the real date taken into one field, usually the date time original, you can mirror that date on all the other fields that different programs rely on. Just double click each destination tag and type EXIF photo date time original, that copies the good date across automatically. Do this once and for every app from Bridge to Milio to your NAS indexing software, we'll finally agree on when the photo was taken. No more 1970 or wrong decade surprises in your albums. EXIF Pilot might not look fancy, but it's one of those quiet little tools that just works. It lets you peek under the hood of your photos fix what's broken and make sure your metadata is clean, complete and consistent. If you're serious about organizing your digital archive, especially before importing it into bigger software like Lightroom or Milio, this is one of those must have tools. And if you want to go a step further, check out my next video here on how to batch rename your photos in a couple of clicks. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more photo organizing tips. Have fun rediscovering your memories. I'll see you in my next video.